one in Bankstown. And let me tell you how it happens. It starts with a dribble. Everyone's friendly. Everyone gets along. Everyone purportedly respects our values and our social way of life. And they come. And they come. And they keep coming. And then when they're the majority, they overtake the school system. I wonder if Malcolm or any of his kids know what it's like to go to Sir Joseph Banks High School in southwestern Sydney to be confronted with wogs. Aussies suck. Wogs are gods written on school bags. You speak up being a proud Australian, I'll tell you what happens. They bash you. They gang bash you. For the last four years of my high schooling, weekly, myself and my friends were physically bashed with weapons, with fists, with feet. Then we look at society. Bankstown. Take Bankstown Square where my nan used to go shopping by herself when she was in her 70s. By the time that we had to move out of Bankstown, and I'll tell you why soon, you could not go there as a white Anglo-Saxon Australian because you would be spat on, you would be punched, there was a good chance of getting knifed, and that was going to the bloody shops in Bankstown. November of last year, I uprooted my family and moved out past Campbelltown. And the straw that broke the camel's back was me coming home from work to pay my taxes, to pay for these welfare cheats, to see my wife in the driveway being verbally abused by three Middle Eastern men. I can't say what they were calling her because the police wouldn't take too kindly to it, but let's just say they called her an overweight prostitute. And that they were going to come back when I wasn't home and they were going to get her. And I quote, get her. I confronted these men to have one of them go to the boot of his car and pull out a knife, like a Rambo Bowie style knife, and threaten to cut my head off with it. And that's what he said. I will cut you, I will cut you, while motioning to his neck. They then attacked my daughter as she got off the bus coming home from school, and that was it. We had to move. Because what would happen every day thereafter was eggs and fruit that had been frozen pelted at our house while my wife was away at home. This is what these people bring. They don't want to assimilate with us. They don't want to go to our churches. They don't want to play our sports. What they want to do is take over. So when you get your first mosque in Point Piper, you'll know the invasion has begun. And once it starts, it will not stop, and eventually you will lose. They will outbreed you, they will out-facilitate you until you've got no respite. And then the overtake is complete. I know it, I lived it for over 20 years. I've seen it start from scratch, and I've seen it end in violence. Because there's nothing better to wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning than the sound of an automatic pistol going off as it shoots the house three doors down because someone didn't pay their drug money on time. That's what it's about. It's a disgrace. Malcolm Turnbull, you are a disgrace. You are a traitor to your people. You are a traitor to your country. And you can take Shorten and that nutcase Dean Atali with you. <laughs> if you can ever find the possum hiding in the bush in Tasmania, take him too. Take him too. Open up your gates, Malcolm. Take a couple of families of Islam. Jesus Christ, mate, you're not struggling for room. You can fit a couple of families in there. And maybe you live it. Instead of your privileged life at Point Piper, your taxpayer-funded trips down to Canberra, you get more in overnight allowance to attend Parliament than unemployed Australians get on welfare. Mate, you're living the life of Riley, son. And while you're doing it, you're betraying your own people. You are destroying our country. Yep. It's not yours, it's ours. You're destroying it. As you sit back, eating your beluga caviar and your salmon steaks, <laughs> laughing at the people that are doing it tough on the street, returned servicemen, sleeping in bloody shacks, shanties. And here we go. Don't worry, Abdul can come in with his nine wives. Not that we have those marriages in Australia. Oh, no, we don't. No, we don't. And they're 27 kids. And then all the welfare that goes with it. Good on you, Malcolm. But you enjoy your stay in Canberra for 198 bucks a night, mate, when you don't even get that on Centrelink. When you're a poor, burnout old digger who served his country, doing it rough, pulling up his cardboard pillow for another night on the sleep. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you so much. You're going to go down in history as the greatest treacherous rat this country's seen. Thank you. Hey, two